Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeap.com. It's been a while uh, since I've been in the shop, at least on video, uh, other than a couple of things that I've done and posted to Instagram. So if you follow Instagram, uh, you'll get to see those. If you don't, um, I'll put the link in the description below in case you want to see what I'm doing running around on Instagram. So as most of you know who follow my channel, I have been spending uh, lots and lots of time either in the land down under or the dungeon. Just depends on how the day was going and uh, you know. But anyway, I've been, been working on my basement. So, But I have uh, gotten a few things for the shop that I thought that I would uh, show you and, and some, some things that I have been doing. So uh, when I do get a chance to sneak out here for a few minutes at a time, uh, I try to get something done. And uh, so anyway, let me uh, talk about some of the things that I got. So I've recently acquired a 110 volt. Um, I think this is considered an evacuation motor. Uh, so when you have um, uh, a furnace, a gas furnace for like your house, before the burners kick on, it runs a, a blower to, uh, to blow out uh, any potential gas or anything that's left there before it injects the gas and then lights. So that's what this, this is. This, I, I had one that was 220, but this one's 110. I think it'd be a little uh, better. I plan on using this as the inlet on my furnace. And uh, even though I think it's a no-no technically, um, I'm probably going to use a light dimmer as a uh, as a speed control to adjust the uh, the airflow, uh, rather than trying to put a damper uh, on it and that stuff. And if that seems to uh, overheat the motor uh, too much or whatever during my session, then I'll look at some other uh, motor speed control. Unless, uh, of course, somebody out there knows of a cheap, inexpensive way for uh, uh, AC motor speed control. Like I said, I just. Uh, uh, without using a damper, I just assume um, uh, vary the speed and, and therefore vary the uh, amount of air going into the furnace. But that gets me one step closer to um, getting my furnace uh, going. So I have uh, have some new books and some new tools and some tools that I made. I'll bring the camera in here and let's, uh, let's take a look and see what we got. Okay, well the first thing I'm going to do is uh, go through a group of books that I've uh, purchased uh, since the last time I showed off some books or maybe I should say my wife purchased because she she tends to buy them for me and she, she uh, unlike me I, I, I buy them by title she buys them by number so uh, so the uh, workshop practice series if you're familiar with that I've um, let me move the camera back here just a little bit sorry about that so the workshop practice series um, and you know, I've talked about those is a group of books uh, come out of Great Britain um, with different um, shop topics and and they're really great resource books uh, at least I would say 95 percent of them uh, the other ones I have aren't so well but for different reasons okay so uh, got number 12 uh, drills taps and dies by Tubal Cain uh, pretty nice book uh, number 16 electric motors this one here's on um, you know wiring electric motors it talks about steppers servos uh, and and some speed control and things like that so it's a pretty good book uh, spring design and manufacture another book by Tubal Cain um, this is an incredible book and one that you probably will have to read twice to get a good firm understanding of what uh, of what uh, he's talking about but it talks about how to how to determine spring strength um, compression strength, uh, how to wind them, um, and all sorts of stuff uh, on making springs. Great book, uh, especially you know if you're going to need a spring for some project that you come that, that the ones in your box just don't quite fit. So this one here is uh, uh, Metalwork uh, and Machining Hints and Tips, number 20. And it's exactly what it is, just a book full of uh, tips and tricks and, and uh, things to help you out in the shop. Uh, number 21 is Adhesive and Sealants. Now, you know, I thought I thought about this book, you know, I thought, well, you know, I wonder how useful that's going to be. Is this going to be uh, stuff that's uh, sort of only available in the UK or something? And what good is it going to do me? But that's not, um, I was pleasantly surprised. He talks about the different types of uh, adhesives and sealants that, that are available on the market and uh and it's we're talking worldwide market so it's uh it's it's a good book i've learned a lot there about the different uh adhesives and sealants and that's a that's a great uh, it's a great book glad i have it 
Now this one here, number 27, Spindles, is one I've been wanting for a long time. And uh, Harpret uh, Sandhu, the author, uh, discusses on how to make about four or five different spindles um, uh, for anything from light drilling to uh, some milling. So it's a pretty good book. I'm excited about that. Number 29, CAD for Model Engineers. Well, uh, this book is really quite dated. So it's, uh, other than uh, having it to complete the series, I don't find this book very useful. So, especially in light of things like uh, uh, Fusion 360 and, and some of the other packages that are available today and, and free. So, workshop materials this is pretty good. This is all about uh, different steels and plastics and non-ferrous metals and their properties um, uh, that for the workshop. Uh, pretty good book. And then, uh, so that's all the uh, workshop series books. Now, the next book uh, was. Um, Recommended to me, uh, if you guys watch Emma uh, uh, and Emma Spare Room Machine Shop, you know that uh, she's slowly releasing her videos on the uh, uh, Kenneth Wells traction engine. And uh, of course, you know, you can get those drawings. Uh, if you go to my Kenneth Wells stationary engine, you can get the drawings for the traction engine available uh, free uh, from uh, one of the uh, miniature uh, modeling uh, engineering groups. So in one of her episodes, she was making a pressure relief valve because the one that's outlined in the drawings uh, uses a spring and a and a and a bit of a section of a bolt and and it's it's just not very good. It's leaky, and uh, you know I I was originally going to just buy one, but then she made one, and I'm like, hey, that's that's pretty cool. Where did you get it? And she got it from a book. Uh, called Model Locomotive Building, introducing LBCS, LBSC's Titch. And uh, so she found a link. I looked for the book, couldn't find it. She, she found a link, but it came with a caveat. She says, I am not responsible. Understand, I am not responsible for any projects that come out of this book, um, you know, or any addiction that might arise. So that's that book. And I tell you what, I've, I've got about uh, 80 pages left to read. It's been a wonderful read. And then I stumbled across a guy, um, and I'll put his, I'll put a link out or in the description, uh, or try to put a card or something at the top of the screen, of uh, Mr. Factotum. Now, Mr. Factotum, if I'm saying his uh, channel name right, is building a meter made version of the Sweet Pea. So uh, he sort of flashed the book on screen, and I bought it, and this here book talks about how to build the uh, Sweet Pea. Um, He's got a great series where he's building the boiler for the uh, for the meter made. Now the, the difference between the meter made and the uh, sweet pea is the sweet pea has four wheels, the meter made has six, uh, and I think it also has a, a coach. So I think it's a 062, uh, where this is a, a 040 or it could be a 042, depending on how you wanted to build it. Uh, but so far he's built the boiler, and uh, he's working on the he's got the frames. And the buffer beams and and uh, uh, that sort of stuff done. So he's he's well well on his way. And I tell you what, it's been really nice reading this book and following his build. So I, I got some pages marked there. So uh, great stuff if you're into model engineering. And then uh, PGS from uh, or uh, Peter from PGS channel, you know, who's built the uh, Gingery milling machine, uh, had mentioned that he got the uh, Gingery cycle engine book and. Uh, I have uh, I have that book, the uh, Atkinson Cycle Engine. Uh, pretty interesting book. They they built them. This was uh, designed and built in an era when Otto had uh, um, uh, patents on four-stroke engines, so you couldn't do a normal four-stroke engine. So this was Atkinson's answer to it. And these are this is a running model. Uh, both of them are running models. So he has this book, and I asked him about the differential book because there's Atkinson created another engine called the differential engine, which is kind of hypnotic. So if you get a chance, uh, maybe search YouTube and find uh, the Atkinson differential and cycle engine, watch them run, because they get all four strokes and a single revolution of the crank. So uh, Gingery, actually, he in his books, he says, hey, this should be a group project. So I'm thinking maybe if Peter will reach out to me and let me know when he starts, uh, starts building his cycle engine. Uh, maybe, maybe I can do one at the same time if if my uh, stuff is set up. And if not, at least I, I can follow along in his build. So 
Anyway, so that's the books that I got. So let me, uh, let me pause here and, and uh, talk about some tools. Okay, since my last video on Christmas, I've had a birthday, and uh, my wife bought a couple more tools for me. And one of those things was a Morse taper uh, chuck. Um, I thought it was a keyless chuck, but it actually has a spanner that uh, goes with it. But still, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful and, and glad to have another chuck uh, in the arsenal for my lathe. So th that will go over there. I have already have a place set up for it, and we'll take a look at that here uh, when we get around to closing out. And then the uh, other tool that she got me, which I thought was pretty awesome, was a machinist level. So uh, this is uh, supposed to be good to uh, 5 tenths of an inch and uh, 10 inches. I've uh, need yet to put it on the surface plate and check uh, to see how, uh, if it needs to be tuned up or anything. So, or, uh, you know, um, you know what I'm trying to say, not tuned up, but uh, if it needs to be adjusted in any way. So that's the two new uh, shop tools uh, that, I've, that I've got that uh, my, my wife uh, purchased for me. Let me set that aside. And then I have made a couple of tools. So let me, uh, let me get those and we'll come back in and take a close look at them. Okay, so as you guys know, I've been working on the uh, Kenneth Well stationary engine and and I have the firebox complete. These holes are just drilled, but they are supposed to be dished. Okay, so I've made a dishing tool. So that gets clamped in the vise on those two flats. Uh, this gets pushed into the hole and then driven down. And you'll see, maybe you can see, there's a radius here. And that forms the radius of, the, uh, of these holes uh, to, you know, just to dump them in to make them uh, look nice and it's just strictly for aesthetic reasons and I had a piece of plate here uh, where I had done a couple sample holes when I finished the tool and for the life of me I got so much junk laying around that I can't find it but that's that now that as you know if you've been following my engine series that the next thing for me to do is the boiler and I have the boiler tube right it's been it's been pickled and cleaned and it's ready to drill a hole up here for the bushing and whatnot but you have to form some end plates. So what I done was I created a forming tool on the lathe. This is turned to um, the ID of the tube minus twice the thickness of the copper that I used to make the end plates. And the copper that I used was just a slice of this tube split and annealed and flattened out. So here are a couple of test pieces that I made. And it comes in just a little bit oversized, but the nice thing is it allows me to uh, pressure turn this to, to turn the outside edge so that it fits the tube nicely. Now my question is for uh, you uh, more experienced folks out there, um, do I need any gap at all or do I just want just a light dry fit for these uh, caps to go into the end of the tube? You know, do I just need a light dry fit? See that starts. Um, or does there need to be a gap? Because I imagine when I heat it up, this tube will expand and probably allow that to drop in. So I imagine that there's got to be some, some sort of friction. So some advice there would be great. So that's, uh, that's that, and this it worked out quite well. The uh, scored mark you see here is where I got, you know, one of my test pieces. I decided to use this here to uh, part the edge straight and probably should have just done a better job of lining the disc up. And then finally, um, there's a bushing that gets made and soldered on the top of the uh, on top of the boiler tube and that bushing will hold uh, the pressure safety valve and um, the uh, there's a depression there so there's a little tool that you could uh, make to form that depression and I, I made one of these tools so what I done was uh, I turned this uh, piece of steel to the ID of the uh, tube, so you know it's a good close fit, and then I faced this off up to the width of the bushing that I made, you know, and so how this works is that uh, you'll drill the hole in the tube, the bushing goes in there. You see how well that fits? Well, maybe you can. The bushing goes in there. This goes through the hole and then when you tighten this down the uh, 
this steel sleeve then will form a depression to give you a nice flat depression for the bushing to silver solder to. But now honestly I think I messed this up. Now I faced this and I haven't experimented yet. I got to dig up some tube. I got some outside somewhere. Uh, I think when I go to compress this I think I'll get a nice round edge on the side but I think it's going to want to crush the tube flat longitudinally. So I think probably what I should have done was uh, got a half inch end mill or something and spotted it until it was flat leaving the surrounding area raised up to support the tube. Now, I'm not using this. I'll try it and see how it works on a piece of scrap and if it doesn't work then I'm probably just going to um, solder the bushing just try to line it up good and straight and just solder it instead of because I don't have a half inch end mill. I don't have any end mills actually. Um, so that's kind of what I've been up to when not in the basement, you know, making a few tools, getting, getting things ready, um, and that sort of thing. So let me reposition the camera and uh, we'll say a couple words and we'll finish this video up. So in one of my last videos, uh, shop update videos, I told you my son had printed out some tool storage for me. And I have some of that mounted to the wall. I still need uh, maybe another AXA holder and I, need, I still need some holders for Morse Taper 3. But you see there's a glaring hole right there in the middle. But fortunately, excuse my arm, the new chuck has a place to live. So uh, it's definitely been helpful for organization and that sort of stuff. So there's a few other things in, that uh, I'd like to do for organization for my tooling. Um, tell me what you think. Do you think the plastic holders are, are helpful? Um, they take a while to print, but uh, you know they're cheap enough. And so anyway, let me uh, reset the camera. Like I said, I was going to do a while ago, and let's let's finish this up. All right. So there you have it. That's what I've been up to. Uh, like I said, when I've not been stuck in the basement. Like I said, on a good day, it's uh, like being in the land down under, and on a bad day, it's the dungeon. So you take your pick. Uh, I have not forgot about my Burke milling machine. I'm, I'm hoping that uh, I'll get a chance to, to disassemble that and put that on video so people can see how it gets disassembled. Start stripping, priming, painting, and that sort of stuff. It's just, uh, you know how it is. You know how life is. Um, it uh, will drive you crazy. And I almost forgot, uh, Vernon uh, from the Mature Patriot channel uh, sent me a uh, general... Um, uh, angle gauge so uh, just you know if you haven't checked out his channel check him out uh, Vernon uh, the Mature Patriot is his channel name uh, great guy Vernon I appreciate it man thank you very much um, all these tools help so uh, look hey uh, uh, thanks guys for hanging in there with me and, and putting over my crazy antics and stuff going on uh, I'm hoping that uh, I'm in a lull right now in the basement so I'm hoping that uh, I can start on uh, at least another Kenneth Wells engine build uh, engine build video. I like to, I'd like to get the uh, I like to get the boiler done right, and uh, so I can start on the next part of that. Um, you know, I got some other things I want to do. Like I said, I'm in a lull. I'm I'm kind of waiting on what tub shower you know that my wife wants. I actually want it in my hands before I finish the last little bit of vertical framing, and then I'll do I'll get the HVAC done and do the soffits, and I'll be back in the basement for a while. But until then. Maybe I can find some time to get out in the shop and work on some of the things that, and play with some of the things that I want to. So again, thanks for your support. Thanks for the emails. Thanks for all the comments. Um, uh, thanks for the comments on the Instagram feed. Uh, I'm having a great time when I get a chance to have a great time. So hey, look, if these uh, videos entertain you or, or you get a laugh or whatever, uh, you enjoy them, please consider liking, subscribing, or sharing. You know, I, I appreciate it. So other than that, have a blessed day.